Welcome to church, everyone. It's great to see you here tonight. It's great to have people with us um, in person and also online. So you might be joining us through Facebook or through YouTube. Um, and you can find out all the details of how to do that at St. Phil's Online. So stphils.org.au and you can go there and find out where the links are. You can watch us live or if you want to re-watch the service, you can go to YouTube and do that as well. Now, I don't know if you know, but on the, um, in stphils.org, there's also resources that you can use throughout the service. So... I've printed them out tonight, nice and big so that I can see them, but you can print them at home or you can look at them on your device and it gives you a service outline for tonight and it also gives you a sermon outline, which is really, really helpful to see um, where Bruce will be taking us um, and just to follow along and to write some notes if you would like to do that. I'm going to pray for us. Lord, May we delight in your presence and your promises as you delight in us. May we be filled tonight with an overwhelming desire to open our hearts to you and to your word. May we be overwhelmed by your unconditional love for us, your broken, messy, but cherished children. And may we seek your face in humility. For those who do not know you yet, Lord, who have joined us tonight, we pray that you will reveal yourself to them now and that they might surrender their lives to you this very night, secure in the knowledge of your love for them and overflowing with joy in the certain hope of eternity with you, um, our all-loving, all-forgiving, gracious, heavenly Father. Amen. So my name's Amanda, and I'm going to be taking you through the service tonight. So tonight we're thinking about choices. What's the hardest choice you've had to make today? Was it chips and chips? chips or chocolate? Was it uh, fruit or donuts? Was it Netflix or YouTube? So many choices every single day. Some are hard to make, some are easy, some are important, some are trivial. So in the last couple of months, we've had lots of choices taken away from us. And that's been a hard and a frustrating time for many of us. We love to have choice, but sometimes our decisions can have really significant consequences. So tonight we're continuing our series in Deuteronomy and we'll be looking at chapter 30. Uh, after explaining to the Israelites how to live as God's people and what God required of them, Moses presents them with a choice. So Bruce is going to speak to us tonight about choice, about grace and about life and death. Uh, to begin our service, we're just going to spend a bit of time in confession. So I'm going to read to us from 1 John 1, verses 8 and 9, and then we're going to say this confession together. So from 1 John 1. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So let's say this confession together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out our transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Amen. So we're going to spend some time singing and praying and hearing from God's word. So I'm going to hand over to our musicians.
Hi everyone, my name is Beck, and for everyone joining me on the live stream, uh, my name's Beck. I'd love to meet you guys in person or over social media. Um, we're going to pray now, so uh, if you'd like to join, please uh, do whatever helps you focus, if that's bow your head or close, uh, close your eyes, whatever it is, uh, please join with me in prayer. Lord God, you know what has happened in all of our personal lives this week. You know every victory that never got celebrated, every struggle, every defeat, and every tragedy that has left us utterly broken and empty, and not just in our lives, but also in the lives of those we love. Lord, we think of our brother Aaron and his family at this time because of the death of his grandmother after being gravely ill. We thank you for her life, for the people that she loved, for the blessings that you poured out through her and the impact that she made, especially on our brother Aaron. Lord God, we pray for Aaron in his loss and we give thanks that he had something to lose, something special and precious in his grandmother. We pray that you will help him and his family in these dark days. Please give wisdom and patience to those who you send to comfort them, and please let them be drawn nearer to you and end up clinging more tightly to that light of hope that is heaven, even though they can hardly see the flicker right now. The tunnel looks so dark and long. Lord God, we thank you for the blessings that you give us every day that we so frequently fail to see and praise you for. We thank you for never leaving us when we are bitter towards you, we thank you for loving us when we throw tantrums and run away. We thank you for staying when we never stay. Thank you for clothing us, paying us, housing us, skilling us up, growing us and feeding us and making us rest when we honestly couldn't care less about you. Thank you for meeting our honesty with grace and understanding that we do not deserve a second of. Lord, what would we do without your kindness in sending your one and only son? What would we do if you didn't take away the punishment of our sins by taking them on yourself? Lord, we see many problems in ourselves and in those around us. We have worries for the world and society. We suffer loss of confidence in the goodness of people and in you. We see evil and injustice that makes us angry and frustrated. Lord, we can hate sin and brokenness and the brokenness it causes, and that is good and right, but please lift our eyes to look at the solution too. Lift our eyes to see you, your love for us, in allowing your son to switch places with us and do battle with evil for us, defeating it and freeing us in the spiritual realm. It is for freedom that you have set us free, and it is in that freedom uh, that comes from the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Now we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Um, it will come up on the screen. Um, can we say it out loud? Yeah, all right, let's say it all together. <laughs> uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's good to see you. It's good to actually see you. Um, it's a two-way thing happening here. It's wonderful. For those, uh, my name's Bruce Stanley, if I haven't met you. That's who I am. Those on live stream following us there, my name's Bruce Stanley. How are you? It's good to see you. It's good to be here together. And uh, if you're not here, uh, we um, look forward to seeing you sometime soon. Um, we've, we've still got, believe it or not, we've still got space for about 10 more people here. How exciting is that? So if you miss out on a ticket to get in, you just have to register. Or if you're a visitor, if you've never been here before, you're welcome to visit.
visit. We've saved places for you, so there are a few extra spots to, uh, if you didn't register and just want to come along. So please do come and join us at uh, St. Phil's on a Sunday night at 6.30. Uh, that'd be great. Let me tell you a few things that are happening. Uh, here's number one. Worship services are all back on site. Uh, we've moved one of our services, the 9.30 English service, to Saturday afternoon, and all the other services are at their usual time. And so uh, for the evening church, we've got, we send out a link, and you can book a ticket just to make sure we don't go over the, the, the regulated amount that we're allowed to have, uh, which is 50 worshippers plus the team. Uh, and that's going to change on July 1. It's going to go up even a little bit further. And so we're going to be close to being able to be all together. Uh, but we're sitting well apart. That Just so you know, 1.5 metres apart for each household is about three seats. Uh, so we're maintaining that distance well. And uh, keep doing that. Um, I'm just, in, just really impressed every time I visit a church or see a church doing social distancing. I think we're doing it really well compared to a lot of other places. You go to the shopping centre, you'll be you know, basically just... You know, pushed around by people so, but you know at church you've got your space so um, yeah if, you, if you're a person who likes their personal space this is your time to shine come along to church and you'll be given all the space that you have ever longed for um, so yeah keep up to date if you haven't uh, kept up to date connect with us go online and just fill in a connect card and we'll add you to our mailing list we have a, a weekly mail out that keeps you updated with all the changes um, every time we make a change with church the, the government comes out with another change uh, within a week and so we are updating all the time and keeping up to date so be confident that we're 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 actually a little bit above and beyond what's required of us here at St. Phil's, and we hope to keep that way. Uh, secondly, VKP is moving. Uh, VKP is our Vacation Kids Plus. A lot of you have been involved in that. Some of you may have even gone to it as a kid, uh, and it's always in the winter school holidays, not this year. Uh, it's moving to spring. Uh, the reason is because we want to be um, able to have the space to have kids on site. So uh, it's moving to the spring holidays. Uh, by that time, our fencing will be finished, our playground will be finished, our old, old hall will be nearly renovated, and we'll have, uh, we're allowed to have, hopefully, uh, more children on site and leaders. So uh, looking forward to that in the spring holidays. So we know some of you won't be able to make it because of uh, the change of date, but hopefully we'll be able to reach out to a lot more people in our community. And ladies, Refresh Women's Conference is on. And uh, put the date in your diary, Saturday, September 19. The guest speaker is Cara Martin. Hands up if you've heard of Cara. Yes, I know a few of you have. She's written books. Uh, Google her name and you'll find the, the interest areas that she's uh, been involved with. Uh, wonderful speaker. And she'll be joining us that day. Uh, so ladies, put it in your diary. Invite your friends. Uh, it'd be great to have them come along as well. Um, as, as you know, things at worship are a little bit different. Uh, we're not able to sing out loud. You can hum to your heart's content. Uh, and we have uh, you know, all the distancing things. But guess what's back this week? Guess what's back right now? Can you guess? Welcome time. That's right. So welcome time. We take five minutes. If you're at home trying to get a cup of tea or say hello to the person next to you, maybe you haven't seen them today until now. Uh, this is a time, if you stay where you're seated, you can turn around and talk to people at a per perfectly acceptable distance. But feel free to move around. Just respect people's space and give them a, uh, one and a half metres as you talk to them. We're going to have five minutes to do that. There's no tea. There's nothing to eat. So you just have to talk or just sit quietly. Close your eyes and pray if you like. And we'll be back soon.
my name's Marcus. I'm part of the music team here at St. Phil's. Uh, we're just going to come back together to sing. Uh, obviously, unfortunately, we cannot all join in singing, but it does give us a unique opportunity to consider uh, the words of the song in a more thoughtful way, uh, a way that we don't usually do in church, uh, but it really gives us a chance to really think about what we are about to sing. So we're about to sing Jerusalem. Uh, hope you're able to enjoy the lyrics.
the offer of life or death. Now, what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that, so that you have to ask, who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it? Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask, who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it? No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord your, is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Joshua to succeed Moses. Then Moses went out and spoke to all of Israel. I am now 120 years old, and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua also will cross over ahead of you, as the Lord has said. And the Lord will do to them what he did to Sihan and Og, the kings of the Amorites, whom he destroyed along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to you, and you must do to them all that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them for the Lord your God goes with you he will never leave you nor forsake you and then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel be strong and courageous for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them and you must divide it among them as their inheritance the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And from Romans chapter 10. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God, and sought to establish their own. They did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness, righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend to the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hi again. 
It's all right. You, you can't sing, but you can say hi. It's all right. It's, all right. it's good you're here. I just want to say that again. It's really good you're here. It's good to be here. It's so encouraging. Uh, for those of, uh, many, of the, many of you have been here on the team uh, running services during the times uh, when we've been locked down. And you know how odd it is to look out on pews and there's no one there. Uh, it's just wonderful to see the pews starting to fill up again. So uh, for those of you at home, uh, we look forward to, to you being with us again uh, and uh, joining us in this. How good was welcome time? Exciting. How weird was singing? I found myself singing a couple of times and I had to stop. It's like, woo, no, I can't do that. No chanting, no chanting, okay? Through the rest of the service, no chanting. It's some weird things we've had to deal with over the last three months. Um, boredom is probably the number one thing I've heard of, of people's uh, anxiety getting up. It's just boredom. I hear certain people, uh, people who work with games, are very busy at the moment because people are ordering. What are they ordering the most of, Cookie? Exactly. Jigsaw puzzles. Life is that boring. <laughs> okay, now I know there are people here who like jigsaw puzzles. I am not one of those people. Uh, and I uh, apologise for any offence that may be caused. Because Just put your hand up if you're a jigsaw puzzle lover. I'm sorry, just close your ears, okay? Because just you're not going to like what I have to say. I don't like jigsaw puzzles. Someone in our family pulled out a jigsaw puzzle, and I've ended up spending some time doing that, uh, but I just don't like them. I find them uh, just pointless. Because I pick out the box, and I think, oh, this is the one we've got at the moment. I pick out the box, and there's the picture. Why put it together? That's what it looks like. You can Google that image and you can see it. You can blow it up, you can print it off, it's there. Why do a jigsaw? What's the point? Uh, I've got to say, honestly, it's because of my impatience. I start them and I just get so impatient. Like, oh, I just long for, to walk away and to come back and for half of it to be finished. Uh, it just, I'm just happy to watch the progress, but I find them just frustrating uh, and I'm too impatient to do them and I just wonder if there's any point at all. Uh, I want to suggest tonight, it's Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy is like the box with a picture on it, right? Uh, Deuteronomy is the picture of what things should look like. Uh, Deuteronomy is the, the picture of, of what God intends for his community to look like. This is the potential of the puzzle. This is the potential for God's people. Deuteronomy is God saying, this is who I want you to be. This is what we could look like together. If you follow my commandments, if you trust me, if you walk in my ways, if you're obedient to me, this is what it could all look like. And so Deuteronomy gives that picture. And then the rest of the Old Testament is Israel going, you know what, I just don't like jigsaw puzzles. It's just too hard. It's pointless. Uh, you know, other people can do it. I just don't want to do it. And the picture never gets put together. So Deuteronomy is God saying, here's what it looks like. It's going to be good. And Israel going, yeah, I don't know, I don't, just too hard. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about the, the problems that Israel faced as, as they were given the picture by God of what it should be and uh, the struggles that we face as well. Because they're very similar, except they're nuanced in the sense that they live in the old covenant and we live in the new covenant post-Jesus. So there's a real subtle and important difference that we're going to look at. So let's have a look at them together. Uh, the first is... This is the first problem Israel faced. It's too hard. Jigsaw puzzles are too hard for some. Uh, I believe you get better at them over time. I'm never going to find that out. Is that true? Is that true? Do you get better at them? You do get better at them? Well, that's good. Good for you. Uh, I'll never get better at it. So it remains difficult. I'm the person that looks for the fourth corner piece and it's just not there. I know pretty much every puzzle that has been given to me is missing the fourth corner. It's not there. It's too hard. This is what Israel says when they look at what God's given them. It's too hard. God, it's too hard to follow you. It's too hard to be obedient. It's too hard uh, to do what you expect of us. And, and God's answer, and here's the tough love answer that we don't want to hear. God says, it's not. It's not too hard. Listen to what he says in verse 11. He says, now what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. You can hear Israel whinging in the background, oh, it's so hard to follow you, God. He's saying, no, it's not. It's not. Verse 14, no, the word is very near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. I've put my word in your heart 
so you can obey it. I've changed your perspective on life. Put my word in your heart. It's not too hard. See, God's saying it's not too hard to follow him, but it does take commitment. And there's the first challenge for us, to be committed to the God who deserves our commitment rather than saying, oh, it's too hard and walk away. It's not too hard, but it does take commitment. He's given us his word to obey. Are we prepared to make the choice to listen to him? Think about all the things that we commit to in life. We commit to eating. Anyone here not commit to eating? I'm pretty sure most of us commit to eating pretty much every day. I'm a bit overcommitted to that. Uh, learning to walk, all of us were committed to learning to walk. Even before you remember committing to that, you were all babies who were trying to get up and, and walk on your feet, on your legs. And you did it. And it was really hard. And I was a parent, it looks really hard. You look, you look at these kids walking, and you're never going to get this. But we all, you know, most of us managed to get it. Maybe exercise, maybe dieting you're committing to, maybe education. How many of you committed years to education, even before you wanted to? Or work, you committed to work. Sometimes you wake up on a Monday morning thinking, I don't want to go to work, but I want the money in my bank account, so I'm going. And you commit to it, and you get up, and you go. And you commit to it. Marriage, there's a commitment. Children. You know, some people are going to find it hard to commit to being back here because it's been three months of not being here. It's hard to change back into where we were, to what we were once committed to doing every week. It's going to be hard. Some people will find that commitment hard, but we've done it before and we can do it again. It's not hard, it's, it's hard to commit. It's not hard to do, it's hard to commit to it. There's lots of distractions. Uh, regular exercise is one of those things we're all told to do, especially during this time where we're often you know, restricted and not able to move around as much as we usually do. It's not that hard to exercise. It's not hard to go for a walk. There's just so many distractions. It's hard to be committed. This is what God's saying to Israel. This is the tough life. This is the hardest part of tonight is to hear this from God. It's not too hard. God's saying directly, it's not hard to follow me. I put my word in your heart. And for us today, this side of Jesus, it's even better for us. Because what do we have that the Israelites didn't have in our heart? Who do we have? Don't chant, but you can say it. We have the Holy Spirit. They didn't have the Holy Spirit in their heart. They didn't have God living in them. But we do. It's not hard. It's just hard to commit. It's hard to recognise the work of the Holy Spirit and commit to the work of the Holy Spirit. It's hard to listen to him and allow him to change our lives. But it's not hard. It's just hard to commit. And there's the tough love for tonight. What God's saying to the Israelites, he's saying to us, it's not hard to follow me. You just need to choose to do it. You, you commit to many, 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 many things in your lifetime. Think of all the things you will commit to tomorrow. God wants you to commit to him and he lives in you. So the, challenge, the first challenge for us is to be committed to the only one who deserves our commitment. The one above all else. Others deserve our commitment, but not like God. It's not too hard. I want to encourage you with that. It's not too hard, but it is hard to commit. It's hard to let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let him lead you. It doesn't sound hard, does it, when you think about it? Let someone else lead you. That's not hard. It's just about surrendering power and control over your own life and doing whatever you want and asking God to be sovereign. Here's the second problem with jigsaw puzzles. It's the someone else can do it problem. I, I walk past a jigsaw puzzle and I might do a little bit, but I, I, quite honestly, mostly, I, I look at a jigsaw puzzle on the table and think someone else can do it and they can take all the glory because I'm just not interested. Right? This, is the, this is the problem for Israel. They're looking at God's laws and they're saying to God, you know what? 
Let Moses do it. He's the pin-up boy, right? He can do it all. What about Joshua? Big, strong Joshua. What a hero. Let him do all the hard work. What about the priests you've got there? They're like the, the edges of the jigsaw puzzle. They can do all the sacrifices. They can be obedient. Just let them do all the work. As for me, I'm the piece of the puzzle that's the little piece of blue sky that there's a thousand of, and they all look the same. Ever feel like that? Because if you ever feel like that, let me tell you this, it is not true. No piece of sky is unimportant. And if you've ever done a 1500-piece jigsaw, jigsaw puzzle and there's one piece of blue sky missing, it's very much not complete. This is Israel's second challenge, that there are individuals not wanting to take personal responsibility for the community. That's why I want to encourage you tonight as individuals before God to take responsibility as part of a community because you do matter. There is no piece of the puzzle that is unimportant that can be done without. Look at verse 19. Uh, God says, Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. He's not talking to an individual. He's talking to the whole community there. Choose life together, all of you together with one heart. He's speaking about all of us. And, and to, to, to emphasise that the blessings and curses, which we, you might have read about in chapter 28, the blessings and curses are also for the community. They're not for individuals. But if your heart turns away, verse 17, and you're not obedient, this is you, the word you in English is very much a just, you don't know if it's singular or plural. This is very much a plural you. If your heart, Israel, your heart as a nation turns away and you, plural, are not obedient and you, plural, are drawn away to bow down to the gods and worship them, I declare you this day that you, plural, will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. See, the blessings and curses are on the whole community. Every member takes responsibility as a part of that community. Because when curse, the curse of God comes, that is the loss of the land, of the promised land, it affects everyone. The good news is that when the blessings come, the blessings affect everyone. The curses are on everyone. The blessings are on everyone. Here's the great news for us living this side of Jesus. The great news for us is that there is no curse now. Isn't that good? Right? Deuteronomy, blessings and curses affected everyone in the community. You might say, oh, I'm just not going to, uh, let's let everyone else do it. You can't say that because the blessings and curses come on everyone. For us, there are no curses because Jesus has taken the curse. Two curses, death and sin. They are the things that, that were the big curse hanging over our head. Jesus removed them. There is no curse for those who follow Jesus. But the other thing, the even, even better news, is that there is still blessing under Jesus for the whole community. So in the Old Testament, you've got blessings and curses for everyone. In the New Testament, you've got no curse because Jesus has taken them away but you have blessings for the whole community. And that's what I want to talk about now. Blessing for the whole community. When we experience blessing, and we talk about blessing, don't we, as Christians? We talk about the way, way I am blessed. I am blessed with this, I am blessed with that. I don't, want us to, I don't think it's a helpful way to talk for us. What's helpful is that we talk about our blessing. Not my blessing. Not your blessing, but our blessing. Uh, so, for example, let's say you are blessed with the gift of administration. Anyone here blessed with that gift? Right, if you're blessed with that, that is a blessing for your community. Not only for your church, but for the community you live in as well. So, we, when you are gifted with the blessing of administration, we are blessed with that gift. You see, it's not your gift, it's our gift. If you're blessed with hospitality, if you're blessed with the gift of teaching, that's not your gift, that's our gift. See, when you're hospitable, that, that's a gift, that's a blessing to everyone. When you can teach, when you can teach adults or children, that's a blessing to your community, not, not just your church, but to your whole community. 
But let's talk about the church particularly. It's our blessing. Here's one you're not going to like. When you are blessed with personal wealth, that's not your blessing. That's our blessing. When we're, when we're blessed with personal wealth, that is a blessing for the community. God's not saying, you know what, I'm just going to bless you with wealth. You just have all that wealth. Just be blessed with it. What blessing is that? If you're not using it to build up the kingdom of God, not building it, using it to build up the community you live in or the communities you live in. God's blessing given to people are for the blessing of the nation, of his people. If you are blessed by God, we are blessed by God because you are a blessing to us. And I want to encourage you to think about that, about your blessings that way. Um, think about what kind of blessing your wealth would be. Let's say you're, you've, you come into a whole lot of wealth. What blessing is that in your community if there are poor and hungry people among us? Your, your, your wealth is actually a curse on you then. What blessing is your health? People often talk about, I'm blessed with good health. What point is that health of your body if you're not using it, as Romans 12 verse 1 says, to live your life as a living sacrifice for God? What's the point of a, of a healthy body if you're not using it to serve God and serve your community and serve, serve his people and serve the people of the world? You know, even sickness can be a blessing. It's not often seen that way. But I want, to, I want you to think about this. Uh, over the last three months, we have lost four members of our church. Four members of our church have died. Uh, many of you have lost other, other members of your family and friends, uh, and not just because of COVID, but just it just seems to be it. there's a lot of death and suffering. And people are in hospital and people are going through surgeries. That are, they're all backed up. And, and it's, a, it's a difficult time. For our church community, a lot of people have been unwell and some have died. But here's the blessing, I think, that's come out of that. Through their sickness and through their deaths, people have been brought together to pray. It's been amazing to see people come together and comfort one another in prayer and remind ourselves of the fact that heaven is... is, is in the future for them. It's been a great blessing to be reminded in a time of death of the promises of God. So being healthy isn't the only blessing. There's so many parts of our life we can be a blessing to others without even realising it, without even intending it. I say it's been a great blessing to be able to pray with many of you over these last few weeks on Zoom and, and other ways as well. Let's be brought together in times of, of great trial. It's a blessing to be together. It's a blessing for the community. When you follow God, you are a blessing to us because you help us follow God. What Israel did is a few of them would go off and, and worship other gods and then they'd lead others to worship other gods and then before you knew it, a whole lot of them were worshipping other gods. And eventually they lost the land. When you follow God, you help us follow God. When you're blessed, it's not your blessing. It's ours. It doesn't matter if you're a tiny piece of, if you feel like a tiny piece of blue sky, you are such an important part to the, to the landscape that God has for his people. You're a blessing in ways that you don't even know. You know, just, just being here tonight, and for those of you watching, just watching tonight is an encouragement and a blessing for us. Lots of ways, but it's not yours, it's ours. Be blessed by being part of God's community and bless us by being a part of us, by being present. Uh, problem three, here's the third problem uh, that Israel faced. Jigsaw puzzles are stupid. I've mentioned this before and some of you may have been offended by that, but they are, they're silly, they're pointless. Now, I've been corrected many, many times today and yesterday uh, that this is not the case and I've been reprimanded over it, so feel free to do that, but I'm just going to put it right out there. They're pointless. Uh, the picture's right here. That's what it looks like. When you put the puzzle together, it's a little bigger, but it's pretty much the same thing. Now, I know people will say it helps, you, helps your brain work. It, it keeps you from boredom. Um, it's a great therapy. I, I believe that. I've been told many times in the last two days that it's good therapy for people recovering. That's all fine. You get a sense of accomplishment. They pass the time. They're interesting. They're fun, allegedly. Uh, anyway, the point is this. Israel looked at what God had, had planned for them. I think, what's the point? 
Because they see, they see things like this. Uh, let's read uh, Deuteronomy 31, verse 2. This is, this is Moses, right? The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. Here's Moses, 120 years old, has given his life to serving God, leading these stubborn people for 40 years in the wilderness. And God says, yeah, you're not going to enter because of that thing with the rock. It's not going to happen. Your arrogance, it just, it just blew the whole deal and you're not going to enter the promised land. You've got to think, how unfair is that, right? But Moses isn't thinking that. Of all the people that should be thinking, what's the point of following God? It should be Moses. But he doesn't think that. Look what he says in the next verse, in verse 3. The Lord God himself will cross over ahead of you. See, Moses is saying, it's not me. It's not me that's going to lead you into the promised land and defeat your enemies. It's God himself. It's not even Joshua. He might be the person on the ground that does it, but God's the one that will lead you into the land and defeat your enemies. He will destroy these nations before you and you'll take possession of their land. So God isn't saying to them, look, follow me and be obedient and we'll all do the best we can. And if you're lucky, at the end, I'll throw in a really good piece of real estate. It's really nice. If you're lucky, you know, if I'll let you cross over. He's not saying that. God was promising them victory over their enemies if they followed him into the land. He went before them. We talked about that a few weeks ago, right? God goes before us in these things. And that's the point. That God was promising them victory over their enemies. Now you may hear other um, uh, ideas in the Christian church about God offering us victory over our enemies. Do you want victory over your enemies? We say, yeah, I want victory over my enemies. Do you want victory over your boss at work and all those problems you've had? Do you want victory over your financial issues? Yes, I want victory. Do you want victory? This is not the victory that God's talking about. What are your enemies? Who are your enemies? They are sin and they are death and that's it. And that's what God is promising you victory over. He's not promising you victory over your financial battles or your work issues. You will struggle through them till the day you die, probably. Some of you will have a good run, some won't. The victory God promises is over sin and death, and that's it. That's the promise. And it's promised in Jesus. Jesus doesn't say to his disciples, look, follow me, follow all my rules, follow the, the life that I live, and, and you never know, you know, you'll live a good life, it'll be great for you, and you never know, one day you might get into heaven. One day. You know, some Christians live thinking that. Others live thinking, God's going to give me victory over every single struggle I have in life. No, God is promising you, and Jesus promised you that the jigsaw is finished. It's done and it's not pointless because he's given you victory over sin and death and that is in heaven. And that's the point. And that's the point of all of this. It's the point of the Old Testament. It's the point of the promised land. It's a mirror for us of heaven. The completed picture is the reality in Jesus that we are guaranteed victory over our two only important enemies of sin and death. Jesus has given us that victory by promising us heaven. Promising us, not maybe, but definite. Heaven is ours and that is the point. And that's the, the third challenge to remember, that heaven is worth it. It is the point. It is the point for all of this. Please don't think ever that the point of, of living as a Christian is to have a pretty good moral, ethical life that makes a difference to the world. That may well be the case, but the point of that is that you will live in community with God and his people without sin forever. That's the point of all this. That's the whole point of following Jesus and leading other people to follow Jesus, that they will know what it means to live in community with God and each other and his people, God's people in God's, in God's land, under God's rule, forever. That's the point. Heaven is the point. And I want to say that really clearly because I've heard so much to the contrary lately that heaven's a nice bonus at the end, that heaven's good, but really it's about what we do in this life. It's not. Heaven is the point. 
And I want us to remember that so on those, those gasping last breaths that you have, you'll remember this is what it's all about. It's all about living with God in community with Him and His people forever. If there is no heaven, there is no point. If there is no resurrection, there is no point. It's all about this. I want to encourage you to remember that. Um, God speaks to us in, in this way. He speaks to Israel and he speaks to us in this way because he knows that we are humans who sometimes think, is it worth it? It's too hard. Someone else can do it. I'm not important. God speaks to us like that because he knows we have those days where sometimes we think all those things. Don't we? And there are days you think all, all those things at once. What's the point? Is it worth it? Someone else can do it. I'm not important. And so he speaks like this to remind us of this one big final point. The promised land for us in Jesus is heaven. The whole Old Testament, the whole promised land thing is a mirror for us of what we have in the promised land of heaven. It's what it's all about. Living with God and his people in community forever. Let's not lose sight of that. Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, you, you're so good to us in the way you speak to us and rebuke us and correct us and encourage us and you challenge us. Um, and many of us are, are finding that uh, difficult, especially at this time in life when uh, life is uncertain and every day brings something new and challenging and, and things that we can't cope with and things that we love and things that we don't love. Um, help us to hear these words in the spirit that you are telling that to us to encourage us that through all of this, Jesus has completed the picture for us and that it's worth it. There are days when we find it hard to follow you, pointless to follow you or not really worth it. Um, help us to be reminded tonight that it is certainly worth it. Uh, help us to keep our eyes fixed on heaven uh, till our dying breath. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come into a time of reflection, can I encourage you, encourage you if you're at home to fill in a comment card um, about your thoughts or questions you might have had on the sermon. Um, and as we reflect, um, let's remember that it's not too hard to follow God, um, that he's placed his word and his spirit in our hearts, that God has promised victory over sin and death through Jesus in heaven. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. So let's choose life. So let's reflect on that for a little while and then the um, band will continue singing.
winds break a blow in you. We are victorious. You are stronger than our hearts. You are greater than the dark with you. We are victorious. Nothing is impossible. Every chain is breakable in you. We are victorious. You are stronger than our hearts. You are greater than the dark with you. We are victorious. Nothing is impossible. Every chain is breakable. I don't know about you, but I want to break out in song. It's so hard not to sing, when, especially when you're right here. And that's what we do at church. We sing and worship God together. But um, at least we can hum and tap our feet. So um, let's read. I'm just going to read to you from Romans chapter 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. A scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved." So if you've called on the name of Jesus tonight and asked him to be your saviour, if you have chosen life over death, then we rejoice with you as you take the first steps in your new life declaring that Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Please let us know by filling out a Connect card at St Phil's Online um, so we can support you or seek out your Christian friends and share your decision with them so that they can walk alongside you in this journey. So let's pray together as we close. Lord, as we go about our week, may our words and our action declare, Jesus is Lord. May our faith in you be evident to all, and may we desire to make disciples for you. Lord, would you remind us that you go before us, just as you went before the Israelites, and Lord, would you draw our eyes to you only. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Amen. And I want to offer this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. We'll see you all next week.